viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we'll provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Protesters demand UN action on Pakistan's occupation on POK and Gilgit Baltistan. India lambasts Pakistan's support for terrorism at UN event in Geneva. And suicide attack in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa kills five Chinese nationals. In a fervent plea for justice and liberation, protesters gathered outside the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, demanding an end to Pakistan's decades-long occupation of parts of Jammu and Kashmir. Political activists from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan voiced their grievances and highlighted the mistreatment and marginalization under Pakistani rule. The demonstrators urged UN to enforce resolutions and facilitate the territory's self-determination. Pakistan occupied parts of the erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir, including what is now known as Pakistan occupied Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. The people of POK and Gilgit Baltistan have endured decades of mistreatment, being treated as second class citizens under the forceful occupation of Pakistan since 1948. Both occupied territories are suffering with issues like poverty, unemployment, high inflation and illiteracy. The locals are continuously holding protests against inflation, high wheat prices, inflated electricity bills and many other issues. Even Kashmiris abroad have joined the dissent questioning the intention of Pakistan. Most recently, political activists from Pakistan and Gilgit Baltistan rallied outside the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva. The protest was organized under the auspices of the National Equality Party, Jammu Kashmir, Gilgit Baltistan and Ladakh during the 55th session of the UN Human Rights Council. They demanded Pakistan to vacate its forces from the occupied territories in accordance with the UN Security Council. Here today uh, uh, to raise our voice against the violation of basic human rights uh, in EOJK, Pakistan, and Gilgit, Baltistan. Uh, we are living animals' lives in, in Gilgit, Baltistan, and POJK. We want Pakistan out of uh, uh, POJK and, and Gilgit, Baltistan, as uh, advised by. Uh, the United Nations. So that's the main thing. We are pro protesting outside the United Nations because our people, it is 77th consecutive year of oppression and uh, uh, violation of basic human rights and uh, fundamental uh, absence of fundamental freedoms in POJK and Gilgit Baltistan. So we have come here outside the United Nations to ask the United Nations to implement their resolutions the, the first part of that resolution is that Pakistan must pull out our army and citizens so that people of Jammu Kashmir, people of Gilgit Baltistan and POJK, they can uh, decide about their future. The protesters carried banners reading, why is the UN continuously failing to force Pakistan out of Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan? They condemned Pakistan's actions and questioned the UN's inaction. Moreover, various international human rights organizations have documented reports of human rights violations in these regions. These violations include restrictions on freedom of expression, arbitrary detentions and arrests, extrajudicial killings, censorship and media restrictions as well as discrimination against minorities. 
There have also been reports of land confiscation and displacement of local communities in Gilgit Baltistan, often linked to development projects and infrastructure initiatives in the name of CPEC, China Pakistan Economic Corridor. I am here in the Human Rights Council session of the United Nations because of the to raise or question of voice against the Pakistani occupation. Pakistani, Pakistan grabbing the resources of the state of Jammu Kashmir, which is occupied by Pakistan, generally called AJK and uh, Gilgit Baltistan. And I am here to represent our people against the occupation of Pakistan, looting and killing of our people, our norms, our history, everything is dismantled by the Pakistani regime and Pakistani occupation. I am here to represent the poor people, they are suffering by the Pakistani auto cities. Despite the promises made by the Pakistani administration, the people of POK continue to be denied the freedom they rightfully deserve. The administration labels them as anti-Pakistan and anti-Islam, further marginalizing their voices. The people of POK yearn for the opportunity to improve their economic condition and reclaim what truly belongs to them. The plight of the people in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir cannot be ignored any longer. The ongoing protests and demands for justice emphasize the urgent need to address the atrocities committed against the people of POK. The international community must unite to support their quest for human rights and a better future, ensuring their voices are heard and injustice is stopped. Baloch community worldwide observed the Black Day on March 27. On the occasion, Baloch national movement Netherlands called for global attention to Baloch genocide and organized a protest rally in Amsterdam. Holding placards and banners, protesters denounced the forced occupation of Balochistan by Pakistan forces. Protesters were also seen distributing pamphlets to raise awareness among locals about the Balochistan issue. Highlighting their struggle, Baloch activists emphasized how Pakistani forces annexed Balochistan on 27th March 1948. We have this report. These Baloch protesters on the streets of Amsterdam are raising slogans against the terrorism of Pakistan. Leaders and political leaders of Baloch national movement are raising their voice against the state-sponsored terrorism against Baloch community. On March 27, the Baloch activists observed the Black Day in front of the Pakistani consulate in Amsterdam. Pakistan on March 27, 1947, had carried out a military attack on Balochistan and forcibly occupied it. On the 76th anniversary of the occupation of the independent state of Balochistan by the Pakistani army, Black Day was observed not only in Germany 
but also in other countries as well. Holding anti-Pakistan posters and banners in their hands, under the banner of Baloch National Movement in the United Kingdom, Baloch leaders and human rights activists raised slogans for complete independence of Balochistan from Pakistan and raised slogans against the increasing atrocities. At the dawn of India's independence in 1947, the region now known as Balochistan was partitioned into four princely states, Kalat, Kharan, Lasbela and Makaran. Kalat was not obliged to join either India or Pakistan and was not a member of the Chamber of Princely States. Therefore, Khan Mir Ahmad Yar Khan, also known as Khan of Kalat, its last ruler, opted for independence. On March 26, however, the Pakistan army moved into the Baloch coastal region of Pasni, Jiwani and Turbat. Khan had no option but to agree to Jinnah's terms. occupation of Balochistan in 1948. The Baloch people have been observing the 27 March as a black day. The Baloch always from the since 1948 they are struggling for, for get the freedom of Baloch, Baloch land. And 27 March is being observed as a black day. Baloch nation, they protest, they host, flag, flag on your houses, and we are the flag, sticker on the hands to express, express the hatred against the occupation, pro freedom, political parties, stage protest. The Pakistani Army and Intelligence Agency ISI have crossed all limits of barbarity to suppress the wave of independence and separatism in Balochistan. The Pakistani government's response to the separatist movement has seen a violent crackdown, killing and disappearing thousands of ethnic Baloch suspected of either being a rebel or supporting the rebellion. Many of those missing turned up dead later, often with torture marks on their bodies. The continued resistance from oppressed groups underscored the urgent need for international intervention to bring about meaningful change and relief to the suffering of people. At a recent United Nations event in Geneva, India slams Pakistan after latter rigged up the Kashmir issue. India delivered a pointed response to Pakistan's repeated emphasis on the Kashmir issue. In a swift rebuttal, New Delhi condemned Pakistan's focus on Kashmir while highlighting its own history of aiding and actively supporting terrorists. Pakistan's obsession with Kashmir is as old as its creation. For Kashmir, Pakistan staked its sovereignty, its identity, its economy and even the lives of its citizens. The country's long-standing fixation on Kashmir doesn't appear to be waning anytime soon as Islamabad continues to bring up the Kashmir issue in the United Nations. At a recent United Nations event in Geneva, India scoffs at Pakistan after latter rigged up Kashmir issue. During the 148th session of the Inter-Parliamentary Union, India gave a staunch response to Pakistan for the mention of Jammu and Kashmir on the platform. Representing the Indian delegation at the IPU, Deputy Chairman of Rajya Sabha, Harivansh Narayan Singh, defended India's democracy and reiterated that Jammu and Kashmir has been and will remain an integral and inalienable part of India. I take the floor to reject the preposterous comments made by Pakistan against my country. India is the largest democracy in the world and I am privileged that many consider the Indian democracy a model to be evaluated.
lectures by a country which has an abysmal track record of democracy is laughable. This response came as Pakistan continued to engage in hostile and fabricated propaganda to vilify India and to divert attention from its domestic, political and economic failures. New Delhi completely and unequivocally rejected all actions and statements by Pakistan on matters that are completely internal to India. As a victim of cross-border terrorism for several decades, India has been at the forefront of the fight against terrorism. Slamming Islamabad for being a terror state, India also reiterated that Pakistan has an established history of actively supporting terror groups and holds the shameful record of hosting the largest number of terrorists proscribed by the UN Security Council. Pakistan would be well advised to stop its terror factories that continue to launch countless cross-border terrorist attacks in Jammu and Kashmir while farcically claiming to champion the cause of human rights. IPU members are well aware that Pakistan has an established history of harboring, aiding and actively supporting terrorists. Let me recall that Osama bin Laden, the face of global terror was found in Pakistan. Madam Speaker, the country Pakistan holds the ignorable record of hosting one seconds. of the largest number of terrorists proscribed by the UN Security Council. I trust that Pakistan will draw the correct lessons for the good of its own people. India has hit out at Pakistan on a number of occasions lately on international platforms. Last month, at the 55th Human Rights Council of the United Nations, India's first secretary at the UN Human Rights Council, Anupama Singh, rejected Pakistan and Turkey's mention of Jammu and Kashmir on the platform. In her address, she pointed out Pakistan's own human rights record as truly abysmal. Pakistan, since decades, has been using all global platforms to spew venom against India. Its representatives pass fabricated and slanderous statements to further their anti-India propaganda, but eventually to their much embarrassment, India puts the truth forward, hence exposing all of its lies and immoral terror connections. Five Chinese nationals were killed after a suicide attacker rammed his explosive laden vehicle into their convoy near Basham city in northwest Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. The convoy was on its way from Islamabad to Dasu, the site of a key hydroelectric dam being constructed by a Chinese company about 270 km from the capital. This is the third major attack on Chinese interests in Pakistan in less than a week. Let's delve into the matter in our next report. On March 26th, a suicide bomber rammed a vehicle into a convoy of Chinese engineers in northwestern Pakistan. The engineers were en route from Islamabad to their camp at the dam construction site in Dasu in the province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. At least six people were killed, including five Chinese nationals. जो कानवाय था वो बारह गाड़ियों का कानवाय था उसमें दो बसें थी जिसमें चाइनीज सवार थे और एक विट्स जो थी ये जो जिसमें खुदकश बमबार था ये गया है और उस बस के साथ टकरा टकराया है जिसकी वजह से वो बस कई में गिरी है और उसमें पांच चाइनीज और एक कोहिस्तान से ताल्लुक रखने वाला ड्राइवर था जो कि फोत हो चुका है दिस इज द थर्ड मेजर अटैक ऑन चाइनीज इंटरेस्ट इन पाकिस्तान इन अ वीक The first two attacks targeted a Pakistan naval air base and a strategic port used by China in the southwest province of Balochistan, where Beijing is investing heavily in infrastructure projects. Majid Brigade of the Balochistan Liberation Army or BLA, an armed rebel group in the region, claimed responsibility for both the attacks. While no group has claimed responsibility for this latest attack, Suspicion is likely to fall on Baloch separatists who have been involved in similar incidents in the past.
this attack is very significant because uh, the claim about from uh, no one yet is significant uh, because they want uh, to uh, it looks like they, it could be a subcontract job like one organization has uh, given the task to another organization to execute this it, it, that could be the case as well for instance the bla or any other Baloch organization uh, could have subcontracted this to the organizations uh, who are active in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, like the TTP. Uh, and uh, the TTP has, execute, uh, has conducted the execution. Chinese engineers have been working on a number of projects in Pakistan with Beijing, investing over $65 billion in infrastructure works as part of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor under Beijing's Wider Belt and Road Initiative. Despite promises of economic development, the ground reality in Balochistan paints a grim picture. With 70% of its population living in poverty and a large number of children out of school, the region continues to face significant challenges in education and healthcare. Moreover, the influx of Chinese investment has raised concerns about Pakistan's growing debt to China and the impact on local communities. Gwadar city, once home to indigenous Baloch people, is now heavily occupied by Chinese interests, leading to the displacement of local businesses and residents. So-called developmental projects initiated by the oppressor primarily serve their own interest while offering a little to no benefit to the oppressed nation. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor is, uh, uh, is a apparent example of this injustice. Despite promises of economic prosperity, CPEC is uh, instead brought about increased brutalities and human rights violations against local communities. Moreover, these projects are systematically altering the demographic balance of affected regions, leaving indigenous groups like Baluch, Pashtun and Sindhis marginalized and deprived. The Baluch are seeing no political solution to their issue and have taken up arms to show their resistance against Pakistan and China in Balochistan. The Baloch are fighting for their rights politically and with armed struggle. On the other hand, Pakistan army has increased its cruelty against the Baloch and have been abducting, torturing and killing the Baloch political activists, student leaders and intellectuals. Numerous global media outlets have repeatedly shed light on the discovery of numerous bodies of suspected armed separatists and political activists in Balochistan, suggesting extrajudicial killings by Pakistani security forces. All this has given birth to insurgency and many Baloch have taken up arms to revolt against Islamabad, especially Pakistan army and the Chinese nationals. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.